everybody, Arielle here. I'm a physical therapist and Pilates instructor and studio owner. And I wanted to share a short video today with exercises, therapeutic exercises for knee pain with you. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos out with different ideas about how to treat knee pain. Um, but what I would like to just clarify in my video today is that there's a lot of different reasons why people have knee pain. We can have knee pain in m many different areas of the knee and, and again due to different reasons. We actually have a couple of knee joints. We have what's called the patellofemoral joint which is your kneecap gliding along your femur bone or your thigh bone and we also have the joint that is our thigh bone with our lower leg bone, our femur to our tibia. And so we can essentially have pain with the kneecap joint or pain between the thigh bone and the lower bone which is often things like meniscus injuries or ligamentous injuries. And the way that we treat knee pain will depend some on the type of pathology that's in your knee. So not all exercises are gonna work for all different types of knee conditions and pain. But what I will say about the knee that we know is we consider the knee the dumb joint. And the reason that we call it that is that what happens at the knee is almost 100% dictated by what's happening above the knee joint and below the knee joint. So both at the hip and at the foot. So today what I'm gonna focus on is showing you how to address hip issues or hip imbalances that often contribute to knee stress and related knee pain. And maybe in a future video, I can show you some things to do for foot pronation and other issues with the foot that also contribute to knee stress and knee pain. But what I'm not going to show you today that you've probably seen in lots of different um, treatment techniques is things like what's called a quad set, where I'm working on strengthening my quad muscle, or I'm doing what's called a straight leg raise, lifting my leg up and down, again, focusing on the thigh muscle. There is a time and a place to strengthen your quadricep muscle. And oftentimes when we're working with patients who have just had knee surgery and their knee is very swollen, this quadricep muscle is shut down and it does need to be um, awakened and it needs to be trained. But for the most part, the quad muscle is overactive and it's not a place that we usually need to strengthen. In fact, we need to create a lot more balance by training what's called the posterior chain, particularly in women. And that would be the back of the leg, like your hamstring, your buttock muscles, and your lateral side hip muscles. And so today, that's what I'm going to show you, is how to mobilize those muscles and strengthen them. So we're gonna start with the gluteus maximus stretch. You may have seen these in previous videos, but when this muscle gets very tight, it changes the amount of rotation that's allowed in your hip, which directly causes stress to your knee joint when you walk, squat, and function. So again, to review the gluteus maximus stretch, I'm gonna lie on my back. I'm gonna take the leg up at about a right angle. I'm going to draw the leg across the midline with my opposite hand. If I don't have access to the bottom of the foot, I can hold the shin. If this still feels unaccessible, I can bend the lower leg. And I'm going to stretch the back hip pocket out. If this causes knee stress, I can avoid bringing it across the midline a little bit. So play with the mechanics of the position that you're in so that the stretch is in the hip and not in the knee. And I'm going to hold this for a minimum of 30 seconds. And I'm going to do this multiple times a day on both sides, even the side that does not hurt, to try to create some balance through my hips. So stretch one is encouraging more mobility and rotation through my hips by stretching my gluteals. Exercise two is to start to strengthen the glutes at the same time. So we'll do bridges. We're gonna lift and peel the pelvis off the mat. Keep the legs a little wider than hip distance. And for this, 
really monitor the knee. If the knee feels sore, play again with the alignment. Maybe you need to go a little wider. Maybe you need to slightly externally rotate the legs. I'm gonna lower and hover the hips and then lift the hips. And what I'm looking to do is feel my buttock muscles working. I may do 10 to 15 here and then progress into a bridge with a march. And then finally progress to a bridge, single leg, up and down on one leg. And this is where I'm really watching that my knee is aligned over the middle of my foot and I'm not feeling knee pain or stress through the front of the knee. And maybe two to three sets of about 10 repetitions here. Good. So stretching the glutes and strengthening the glutes. Exercises one and two. The last thing I'll do is a variation of a mini squat up in standing. So just to start off and remind you that if you have a lot of acute knee pain, sticking with exercises that are not in standing is what we would suggest that you do. So you're not loading the knee with your body weight. <clears throat> Otherwise, doing squats and practicing squat mechanics is actually quite good for the knee if done well with proper mechanics. So we're gonna start with the feet just a little wider than hip distance. And standing in front of a mirror for this exercise, um, I would advise you to do, so that you can really see what's happening at your knee joint. You're going to sit your hips back, and I'll turn to the side here for a moment. Sitting your hips back puts weight into the heels, which automatically takes stress and load off the front of the knee. And I should start to feel my buttock muscles engaging there almost to a point where I can lift my toes off. And I'm gonna hold here for about five seconds, come up to standing and bring my pelvis underneath me. Looking from the front, my hips are going back. My toes, my, my kneecap is about right over my middle, my second to third toe. So one of the biggest um, alignment uh, Errors that people will make is generally having their knees draw inward, particularly with women. So you're really thinking about spiraling the thigh bone out and creating the alignment over the tibia, the shin, and the lower leg. These do not have to be deep. You can come just 45 degrees, as low as I'm going here, to feel the work through the hips. And so the idea is that you're practicing what's called a functional squat to train your hip muscles to take stress off your knees. The incorrect technique looks like this. My hips go straight down. I feel the load and the weight into my knees. Sometimes you'll also see people start with a good position and then end in a poor position. So they're shifting their weight and pelvis forward, creating load on the knees. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm happy to answer any questions, but essentially the take home message is, if you're experiencing knee pain and you're receiving knee treatment and you find that the only thing that you're doing is exercises or the majority of what you're doing is exercises to strengthen your kneecap itself and your thigh muscles, that there's probably a more comprehensive approach that can be taken. In Pilates, we're often doing abdominal work, hip work, we're also doing gait analysis and looking at how you're walking and how your feet are working, which we can address in another video. Thanks so much.